Yeah, so maybe maybe it is a bit of a it's a bit of both. You know what I mean? Like, look, I have no problem with the the mic. So I thought that I watched the Saliba explanation, and, and you're happy with that. Like, at least you can see there's rationale behind it. You know, whereas when you're watching it in the game when there isn't, it just feels arbitrary sometimes. Like they just go, "Oh yeah, this is a rare. I've gone to the monitor." Like at least there's a breakdown of it. Um, so for that, for me, like sacking David Coop won't change a thing like because the the underlying issues are still going to be there how they're consistently getting decisions wrong uh with var the lack of transparency the lack of standardization the just how different like you said one ref can give one decision one way and then that same incident of ref will go completely the other way so all of these things will still be there it's sacking him not sacking him makes no difference. They need to just look at it and go, right, in the contract he signed, has he broke any of the the terms in the contract that would allow for dismissal? That's what it comes down to. So if there's anything in what he signed that says, yeah, if you're caught, um, you know, in public talking about teams or whatever, then that's grounds for dismissal. If you're caught doing drugs, grounds for dismissal. That's what they need to look mm -hmm. at in terms of not... Make it. I don't care about some PR of you know we've got to be seen to sack him to to appease the appease the angry mobs. Forget the mobs. Is 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 it right soon to sack him? Yes or no? But they've got bigger issues than this one guy, and we're going to continue to see it unless they clean them no, up. And I, it's, I, it's, I, it's I, I, no, I agree. And a lot of people have said that you know sort of the the, the accusations that have come out today that he was trying to organise what they're the newspapers are calling it like a drugs party. And again, I think that's those words make it sound ridiculous. <laughs> and some people say no, it was just him trying to arrange like, drinks after a game. And I'm like, okay. But again, someone as well paid as a Premier League referee looking after a game between those two teams. I think it is absolutely unprofessional in the build up to that game and at half time to be focusing on a piss up or party later on for, for me personally, I think there are certain jobs in this world where that isn't acceptable. It's not like you're on a lunch break when you're on the halftime bit. It's you're essentially like, even though it's a break from the game, the football match is still on. It's just the halftime period where you come in, you rehydrate, you obviously talk and communicate. You speak about the game. I'm sure referees do something similar on a performance level to what the, players and the managers go through does that make sense like you'd be yeah. you'd be horrified as a fan if your players at halftime went in the dressing room got on the phones to their girlfriends and their mates and started organizing their nights out no, no. yeah that's we, it we, you've got to be thinking about the path you've just had and then yeah. mentally preparing for the next half and and the, yeah and this is this is why for me I, i've got a horrible feeling that there's lots more i just don't think david coot's doing that by himself i believe it is part of the culture of referees which is why I think these inconsistencies exist. And a lot of people have said to me today, Terry, but you said that Saliba deserved the red. I did, but my personal subjective views are not the point to this. Howard Webb breaks down why Saliba gets a red card. And he says that we look at four things, which is distance from goal, covering defenders. Was the player in control of the ball or would he have got control of the ball? And um, there's there's another one which well, I they, they did talk about the goalkeeper. The, 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 yeah, but the direction of play. So is the ball going towards goal or away from goal? And he breaks down and says that Saliba's one ticks all of those boxes. And I'm like, okay, again, I can accept that. I thought it was a red card, so I'm not against what he said. It's then when you see the breakdown of Tossins when they say, well, it's too complicated, but it's too far from goal anyway, and Jota doesn't have control of the ball. So I instantly think, hang on. So there's two of the four that are not ticked for that one, but you could have unticked both of those for Saliba's, but you didn't. When people say to me, Terry, but it's a subjective decision. How is it subjective? We can all, as football fans, watch that and know both Evan Nilsson and Jota were going to get to that ball. They're about the same distance from goal, so therefore the distance shouldn't come into this. And they're a day apart. And the Arsenal one was such a famous situation. There is no way those other referees weren't aware of it. Now, again, unless they're spending a lot of their downtime organising nights out and parties and not focusing on their jobs... Why are they not aware of this? And it's that inconsistency that's being called out here. And as much as it's bad for Arsenal, you can argue that Liverpool are robbed. Maybe they score more goals, which helps their goal difference. The team that plays Chelsea next, Tossing was able to play. Yeah, the Van der Ven situation a week later. Now, Crystal Palace could have played against 10 men, scored more goals. That meant Van der Ven was fit for his next game. Uh, sorry, available for the next game. There's, the ramifications of this are massive. 
And I, the problem with it is this. People try and say things like, oh, we, you know, Gary Neville kind of said it last season. We just don't want to start creating excuses for teams not to win. This isn't about protecting teams from rightful criticism of their style of play, their performances, their missed chances, the manager getting things wrong. But this is such a massive issue. The inconsistencies for me are the, are the biggest focus. But they seem to be, again, most fans will agree that the inconsistencies are everyone's biggest problem. But no one's talking. None of the mainstream media are talking about the inconsistencies. They will highlight individual mistakes or decisions, get a justification for that in isolation, and everyone goes, okay, great, all dealt with, and they move on. I, I think they, I honestly think they feel we're stupid. That's how it comes yeah. across to me, boys. They, they should, they, they can never, I don't think you'll ever get rid of the inconsistencies. You should, you can reduce it, but you'll always get 50 50 decisions, right? And in those 50 50 decisions, and there's a lot where you can say, yeah, I can see why that would be given. I can see why it wouldn't be given in, in a lot of those situations. And really, it's on the players um, and the ref not to give the referee that option. But then ones that are like clear as day, and you're like, wait a minute, this is completely the same thing that was given last week that's not given now that's they need to them glaring ones them ones that are on the yeah. knife edge 50 50 i'm not fussed about if it's oh well this went one way this week and it went one because it can go either way but them them glaringly obvious ones that's what that's how bad it that's what they really need to no, focus on I completely agree I just like I love this comment it says now do you believe in conspiracies Terry no listen do I believe in listen some of the things that have been called conspiracy theories in this world a lot some of them have turned out to be absolutely true Let's, let's not like get get that twisted. Certain things have been said, even in the last five years. That's all I'm going to say on it because the internet's weird. Have been proved were called cool conspiracy theories that are now the mainstream. That's cool. What I don't believe is that the referees have got together and said we are going to just screw over Arsenal. We're just going to screw over Liverpool. We're just going to damage Manchester United. I don't believe in that. And again, if that's the narrative if you're pushing, you, you're going to lose people. It's they are, I think, what I believe based on everything that's come out this week. I believe that these referees hold far too much bias, and I believe they hold grudges against fan bases, in particular managers and players. And it can chop and change. It might be you might have a, a ref that goes for a, free, a month period of hating Man United because something the fans said, and then suddenly something happens at a Brighton game and that overtakes us because he now hates them more for a few weeks. I think this is rife in the game, and I think the PG MOL. My personal opinion is they do very little to counteract it, which is this is why we're seeing the mass level of inconsistencies and then the way they cover it up. And the reason that I think the media outlets don't want to let it get out and why they protect them is because it would throw football into disrepute. You could argue that games couldn't continue for a while and that would cost these, cost these companies hundreds of millions of pounds. That is why it makes sense for them to protect them. So I wouldn't even... I, so do I, if you want to call that a conspiracy theory... I suppose it is to a degree. I believe there is a bit of a conspiracy there to cover some of this up, but I don't think it's targeted on one particular football club. I think there is grudges and biases that are damaging the integrity of the decision-making. I think everybody's fully aware of it at their level, but they can't allow it to come out. So it's being protected. The maddest bit is they should be doing a lot more behind the scenes to improve it so that so that it goes away, so we stop focusing on it. Because I don't think fans are going to let it go now, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, viewers, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you are subscribing. Make sure you uh, have also signed up.